and welcome back to the All Ears Podcast. We've made some adjustments to the studio, as you can possibly see. Uh, things look a little bit different. Maybe not. Maybe yes. Uh, play around with the lighting a little bit. There's a little bit of yellow right here, some red, and then some blue. Because I got red, yellow, blue, and then a white. Yes. It's looking good, in my opinion. Uh, this is the second episode. It's been been crazy lately. That's what I always say. It's, it's been crazy. It's been so weird. But uh, because of the quarantine, I've been picking up shifts at the grocery store I used to work at, Ralph's. And I had an interaction with one of the higher-up managers. He, uh, So I work in online pickups or in bookkeeping. Um, and so basically wherever they need me. And so I have these headphones in when I'm picking for the online orders. So... I'm going around and picking stuff up throughout the store, and I have the, a headphone in just so I can listen to things. And I needed to charge my headphones, go to the back to get a charger, which is in the bookkeeper's office. I ask one of these district managers to let me into the office, and he goes, Who are you? Like, I don't see a name tag. And it's like, Yeah, but I've se- I used to work here for like a year and a half. And I know, like, we know each other, obviously. Uh, so I was like, uh, whatever. I just, I don't get offended, but I was just like, now is a good opportunity for me to introduce myself. I go, hello, my name is Anthony Martin. Uh, I recently got rehired because of the pandemic. Um, I'm the backup bookkeeper and I also do, uh, the online orders and Ralph's pickup. Can I please get into the bookkeeper's office and get a headphone charger? And he goes, you, so what do you need a charger for, for your, uh, for your iPad? As if... And like, you know, kids play on iPads, little kids play on iPads. So that's the vibe that I'm getting from him is like, is this guy trying to insult me right now? And so I was like, no, it's for my headphones. And he goes, oh, you're not supposed to be wearing those. People are dying. (laughs) The disease, old people are going to stop shopping at that store because they're dead. And, you know, this guy's probably in his 40s, so he's not too much of like a target for the virus, but I'll cough on him next ten- next chance I get. Like, what? Like, there are 40 people in that store with headphones in, and he decides to be like, hmm, this guy with big ears shouldn't... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Got my coffee. Got my brain juice. Uh, all I need. Oh, uh, I sent out a few messages. Hopefully we'll get a call. I, I want to make it a thing where I call other comics because I think that'll just be fun. Um, but yeah, I've been getting way into music recently and it's made me and my dad get closer. Like I, I really like the music I'm listening to right now. I'm listening to a lot of Marvin Gaye. Um, who is that other? Like just old stuff. Bill Withers. I, I was listening to Bill Withers all day, the day before and the day when I learned that he had died. Wasn't it fucked up? I almost said the day he killed himself. Celebrities have been killing themselves so often, I'm used to saying that they killed themselves. It's almost like a single mom. Uh, Celebrities dying, instead of saying they're dead, I say they kill themselves. And then with whenever I see a mom, I say there's a single mom. I don't know why. I think it's because I know, like, my, my sister's a single mom. I know a lot of single moms. Uh, I just don't see a lot of just plain moms, you know, but I've been listening to Bill Withers a lot right before he died. And then I had said that I was like, uh, I'd ask my brother like, Hey, uh, do you listen to Bill Withers? He goes like, who's that? And I'm like, you don't know who Bill Withers is. I love Bill Withers. And my dad who, from who's like in a totally different room, just like you like Bill Withers. <laughs> It's so interesting the way that me and my dad have very similar taste in music. Um, he was telling me about how he was going through a Rage Against the Machine album. And I was like, you like Rage Against the Machine? He goes, I love Rage. I, lo- I love Rage. <laughs> I don't call it Rage. It's Rage Against the Machine. He's like affectionately shorthand. It's like, oh, you know Matthew McConaughey? And he's like, oh, Matt Ma- <laughs> Mac McConaughey? Of course I, lo- I know Matt McConaughey. so weird anyway so uh, I'm a personal trainer the plane there's a plane 
I heard that someone took a plane ride and they were the only person on the plane. Can you believe that? You know how much pollution that is? Not that I'm like very politically active or whatever, but like it's so much fuel wasted. These, I I can go to Barcelona for, for $600. I am planning a trip though. <laughs> I do wanna, I'm gonna go up to like Nevada, see my friends um, or Portland. I just wanna fly around. I mean, now's the time <laughs> as I criticize these planes. Um, what was I saying? Um, so I'm a person trainer. Uh, I'm still training people, but sparingly. And I've been training my family in, because of this, because I'm staying at home and my sister is not in great shape. And my brother is 300 pounds. He, my brother's 300 pounds. He is a whopping 300 pounds of bullshit, of flat earth spewing nonsense, of anti-vaxxer, the devil is coming bullshit. It's insane. And he, he used to work for like fitness companies, vitamin shops, whatever. He, he's been in the, the health and fitness in industry, um, even though he's not in good shape at all. So, um, he, he finally swallowed some of his pride and he's like, Anthony, can, can we work out? Can we work out, Anthony? Can you help me? Anthony, you're a sexy monster. Could you just help me out? Cause I'm a fat slob. Hey, Anthony, you look great. You look fantastic. You got the abs coming in. You've got the, the bicep vein and I look like grew from despicable me. If you could just help me out, that would be, that would be great. And I said, yes, we can work out. And so I, I was about to work out. I invite him to come with me. Uh, we're just doing home workouts. We have some supplies. I have some supplies in the trunk of my car. I just bust it out. Um, I do what I'm going to do. He does what he's going to do. And I elaborate. I'm like, okay, you're going to do lunges. You're going to do kettlebell swings. You're going to do, um, bicep curls and you're doing this and as he's doing it and as i'm telling him what to do he's just like what if i just did this what if i just uh like i was cur i was doing curls with like a heavy weight and he's like you mind if i get some of those and i'm like no you cannot and he's like why not but why and i'm like because you can only do four and you're not gonna go till failure on your first day back by the way this guy smokes like half a pack of cigarettes a day so doesn't eat well smoker obese big obese not just obese like you can be you can be 5'4 and 180 pounds and that's obese this guy is 6'2 300 pounds obese it's a different kind of obesity he's an obese if you will and so i'm training him and he's starting to tell like i'm the workouts that i'm doing the workouts that are getting me sweaty he's just like i don't think this works i don't think eh. like he's just like it's kind of like a waste of momentum like, shut the fuck up. I just stopped trying to train him. He started trying, he always does this, where it's like, if I bust out like boxing gloves, it's like, let's spar. I'm like, dude, you're, you're 40. You're 40, okay? I'm a 23 year old stud. I don't think I'm a stud. I just know I'm studly in comparison to a lot of people. I'm a trainer, um, but I'm in shape. You're not in shape. Don't fight me. Uh, that's the that's just that like old guy mentality where it's just like, nah, I still got it. You don't got it. You have to work hard and be disciplined to got it. And you don't got it. You don't got discipline. You don't got you don't got it. OK. Uh, one of those crazy. My dad still has got it. My dad's got it. Like, um, he, he moved a refrigerator by himself. He's like 64. He moved a refrigerator. I would struggle with a refrigerator. He, if he's like, hey, I'm gonna do this, I'd be like, okay, sure thing, dad. <laughs> I love how this podcast segment is just like, my dad, my dad could beat you up. How strong is your dad? <laughs> my dad's pretty strong. Um, my sister, total opposite. My sister's almost, 30? I think she is 30, actually. She is totally open to listening to what I have to tell her. I'm just, I just, 
And I think it's because I'm her brother, you know? Like, she's she told me she had this, like, really fit boyfriend one time. And he and she would always, like, get mad at him and they would fight. And I think it's because, and I, I suffer from this as well. I, I'm suffering from it. Uh, but I have high standards. So, like, if you're weak, I'm like, no. You're weak. Get stronger. And that's the thing. The best part about being weak is that you can just get stronger. You know? Like, I'm ugly. I can't change that. I'm always going to be ugly. I'm always going to... I can see... I, I can see what I look like now. These ear, these eggs on the side of my head are insane. Ooh, I got Sal Santos and Ahmed Al Qadri. Uh, I'm gonna try and call them up, but in a minute. But I, you can't change ugly. You can change fat. You can change weak. You can change small butt. You can change small arms. You can, you can change. Hi, I'm your self-help guru. I'm here to let you know that you can change. You don't have to be a skinny, weak, ugly bitch for your whole life. You can get in good shape. I, trainer Anthony Martin, and comedian with big flowery hands. Wow, look at these, look at these mitts. <laughs> I, can, I can see myself now, I got a new camera. And so I'm just like disgusted with how I look. <laughs> I keep thinking about like, oh God, I'm fucking ugly uh, someone was uh i always explain listening to your stand-up set after you've recorded it to my friends they're like why don't you just listen to your set like why why is it bad for you to listen to your set and the way i tell them the way i explain it to them it's like doing having good stand-up doing a like good set is like um it's like better than sex but listening to a recording is like watching yourself have sex. You're like, oh, especially if it's a bad recording, but you're like, I need to get to that one part. It's like watching yourself masturbate. It's so, that's all open mics are. It's just masturbation. And that's why so many incels are drawn there. They're just like, I just want to, this is what I think. Let me tell you, let me tell you what, what I think. There's a specific comedian, me and a few of my comedy buddies have been roasting. Oh, we all do. Like it's no, like it's notorious. Like, oh, have you met, have you met so and so yet? And they're like, no. Why is he called that? Why does he have? He made a nickname for himself, and it's like, yes, he did, and it's bad. Oh man. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can get Ahmed on the phone. So while well, they're giving me their numbers, um. Let me talk a little bit more about family. I'm I'm finding out how similar me and my dad are through all this. Like I saw a picture of my dad without a beard. My dad has like a big beard, like Santa Claus beard. Not that big. Like it's a little bit tighter than Santa Claus. Like can, you can still see his neck, but you can't see his chin at all. And my dad looks just like me. Like, I always thought, like, oh, I kind of look like my mom. But no, my dad also has a weak chin. And so <laughs> that's the first thing I thought. Just like, damn it, it's, it's his chin. Weak chins run in my family. Except for my brother, Ivan. My brother, Ivan, doesn't look like any of us. He's built like, like Daniel Cormier. Like, he's just, he looks like, he looks like two different UFC fighters. He looks like Frankie Ed Edgar. Um... If Frankie Edgar had Daniel Cormier's body, like that's how he's built. He's not, he's not lean, but he's just stocky and wide. He's just built like a fucking, ugh. he's a mechanic. So he's used to burning his hands and shit. Anyway, let's call up Sal. Hello? Hey, what's up, Sal? What's up? You're on my podcast. Oh, yay. I made it. I'm an artist. <laughs> what's up? What's up? What's up? What, what, what are we talking about? Uh, wait, hold on. Ahmed al Qadri is also calling me, so I'm going to hang up and talk to him, okay? Okay, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's up, Ahmed? Hey, what's up, dude? You forget that uh, I, you already, I already have your number. I sure did. Uh, it's because I'm also texting with Sal and Logan. 
Uh, Sal yeah. called me first, and I just hung up on him to co- talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. I'm going to go text him. I'm sorry. <laughs> Wait, which Logan? Uh, Quiros. Oh, yeah. Duh. What the hell am I thinking? I, I was thinking the only, the, the, the ripped Logan. Dude, he's been going yeah. on and on about Mark Wahlberg. It's amazing. He's not, he's not ripped. He's swollen. He's pretty, I mean, uh, I, I, I mean, well, he's got I'm a six ripped. pack and he's jacked. Yeah, but it's not a... Yeah, but I'm ripped. He's like... He, and he knows... <laughs> he knows that. He knows that? Should I bring up... Should I bring it up when I call him? What do you think he's going to say? You think he's going to be like, Oh, you're so right, Ahmed. I mean, Ahmed showed me everything on how to do. He made my diet plan. He showed me the workout. When I talk to him, I'll tell him about how big of a role model you've been in his life. Uh, yeah, you better do. Um, what's it called? I have five minutes, so let's make it nice and tight. Um, just like your movie hall, am I right? Hey, high five virtual. Um, <laughs> oh, man, I'm bored. I'm at work right now, so thank you for calling me. Yeah, no problem. Oh, you must be a great employee. <laughs> if you're just, I'm oh, I'm just taking calls. Done. I'm an accountant at a medical supply company. That's my new assignment. It's all the way in Santa Clarita. Thank God for the pandemic because there's no traffic whatsoever. Oh, I know. It's great. Uh, I got my stimulus check yesterday. So Same. I'm gonna go out and buy... yeah, I know. It's pretty great, right? Hey, why is it both of our names start with A and we both got a stimulus check yesterday? I made that joke to my dad that like my, we must have been top of the list. <laughs> You're Ahmed Al Qadri. You would be first. You're AA. Yeah, that's true. It may be name. It may be the time you got, or the time. When did you file your taxes for 2019? Oh, I, I, I early. same. I, it was pretty early. That that could also be why. Um, yeah. Another suspicion. So I think because I'm working at, a, I had another theory about working in a grocery store. I, you know what? It's stupid. You're probably right about the taxes. <laughs> I was thinking like, well, you're working for a medical company. I'm working for a grocery store. We're the same uh, level of difficulty. So they must have thought prioritized us because we're, you know, we're the true heroes of this pandemic. Uh, that's not the case. Um, <laughs> it's definitely the record that they already have, which uh-huh. is definitely your 2019 file. And, and it's how early you filed your taxes. I'm just going to stick to my gun. And know that I'm right. Even if I'm wrong, I'm right. Even if you're wrong, you're right. Okay. I'm gonna see if I can call I up uh, Sal now since I hung up on him. I heard it. That's fine. I had a concern. Well, hold on. We got one more minute. I had a, and then I'll like, and then I'll end this call, and then you can call Sal. I was oh, saying, um, here. Why don't we talk about this for the last minute? So you're doing um, that online Instagram show with uh, Jordan Perry. Not Jordan Perry. I wish Jordan Perry. I mean, I was him. He and I are great movie directors, but no, uh, Perry Grown. Perry Grown. Who's Jordan Perry? <laughs> Jordan. No, no, no. Um, you're, oh no, I was confusing Jordan Peele. Yeah. Oh. Jordan Peele is the movie director. Jordan Perry is. I don't know. Perry Grown is a comedian, fellow good comedian friend of mine. He and I started a live thing yesterday, so we're doing a weekly live. Like every like Wednesday, we're just gonna go live for like an hour. We're just you know shooting like joke premises and ideas with each other. That sounds cool. Yeah, yeah. yesterday was nice. It was it was cool. Like it was just like people were commenting and. You know, we had, we had, we were averaging like over like 10, 15 people. It was pretty crazy. <laughs> That's not I bad. Mean, usually, yeah, like, I mean, it was like, it would start off, it would start off at, maybe started at 10 and then you'd go to 20 and then it'd go back to like 15. So it was cool. Um, I don't know. Uh, but we started this live thing. It's on my Instagram, Ahmed from Dallas. His Instagram, Terry Grout. Um, Follow them on Instagram? Yeah, I think it's going to be every Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. our time. 
So 7.30 p.m. Pacific, we're just going to go live and just shoot the shit with just joke premise ideas that we have. That sounds fun. All right. I hope um, some of the, the one listener I have uh, goes and follows you. Um, hey, man, I will follow him back. Great. Okay. Well, Hi. thanks uh, for picking up my call or for calling in. This was fun. Thanks, Ahmed. It was fun. All right. Love you. Take care. Bye. Fucking hate that guy. Anyway, let's get back to Sal. <laughs> <laughs> he sent. I told him I'm sorry. I had to. I, I had to hang up on him for the bit, and he sent me Will Ferrell cry laughing. Hello? Hi, I'm back. Is this another bit? Am I? No, I. Well, okay. So I had sent a, a text to a few comics about like calling them for the podcast. And Ahmed decided he, he needed to be on right now. And so I just thought it would be funny if I hung up on you like that. Ah, yes. Is this still your podcast or is that you are recording? Uh, yeah, I'm recording this. Why, do you want to say something fucked up to me? Oh, no, 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 no. In which case, I'm not recording. I don't know what. Okay. Speak your mind. I the situation I'm being put in right now. Oh, yeah. So um, I'm just, you know, I'm on my podcast. I talk about stuff. And I also like to call my friends, so I'm co- I decided to call you. Well, nice. I'm good. How are, how, are you, how are you doing with all this? I almost said Holocaust. I swear to God, I almost said it. <laughs> and I had to stop myself. I, I didn't mean it as a joke. I just literally, for some reason, I thought that was the word that we had to say. The <laughs> Holocaust? The yeah, that, I, whew, that would have been. You're uh, a well, piece of shit, how's so. The, how's this quarantine <laughs> going? Uh, it's been pretty good for me. I, um... When my, so I, I was a personal trainer before the quarantine. And then when the quarantine happened and the gyms closed down, I had to go independent. Um, and I was fortunate enough to get a few clients. Um, so I was able to do that, but I'm also picking up shifts at the grocery store so I could be on the pulse of when I can get my eggs and toilet paper. Um, that's probably my favorite part of working at a grocery store is like, I, I always know when the toilet paper is there. Um, like, what do you go to the, the, the grocery store? Oh, uh, online orders, which is insane. Like, people don't want to come into the store and get sick, and so they're placing a lot of online orders. And so, usually a busy day would be 40 orders, and now we're at 120. So we've tripled the amount of orders that we get. And the store just can't handle it. Yeah, so, like, you, you have to go around the store picking up all the items and all the stuff? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was the second that, week, my I boss was crying. You're doing Instacart? I was. Oh, by the way, the people who work in Ralph's, so I don't know if, I don't the, for the listeners, so if you order something from Ralph's for delivery, there's a separate company called Instacart, and they go into the store and get it and then deliver it. So for pickup, if you want to go to the store and pick it up, those are Ralph's employees. That's what I do. Um, and we hate Instacart. We fucking hate you guys because you ask, cause like you guys just have worse resources than we do. Like your the app that tells you where everything is, isn't very accurate. Um, but our system is super accurate. And so I always get harassed by Instacart people like, Hey, where's this? Oh, and also this. Oh, and also this. And they want me to like hand it to them because they have this like customer mentality. I mean, in a way, it's for the customer. But no, but I mean, for me, at least, <laughs> the app, with the, with the, when I was using it, it was telling me, like, the right aisle. There were maybe, like, one or two that weren't correct, but I always could figure it out. But I just don't want to do that because I just don't want to get sick. <laughs> oh, yeah. So uh, what happened with you? Are you still in LA? No, I'm in Dallas. So that was the other thing. Like, I kept to Dallas to be with my family for, uh, while this was happening. So, like, I I don't want to get sick because I live with both my parents and one of them is 57 and the other one is 60. Mm-hmm. So, if I get sick and I bring it home, I don't want to give it up. Right. Did you, do your parents so, have life insurance? Yeah. I mean, maybe you should give it to them. Oh, get it. You kill my parents, get the money? Ah? Uh, no, yeah. Now would be the uh, time. A, yeah, yeah, no, that's, that's, that, that's gonna be great. That's my favorite thing I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
I, okay, uh, thanks for the sarcasm, Sal. Uh, no, 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 you're welcome. <laughs> I actually have a, a theory that, like, there's a serial killer running around right now. And, like, because everyone's locked in their house, like, I feel like once this is all over, there's going to be, like, someone's going to be like, there are a bunch of bodies in this guy's backyard. Like, what the fuck? Like, we're just going to find some weird shit that people did during the, uh, the quarantine. I feel like the internet is full of weird shit right now. That's like, the, like, if you can just, if you can go into people's history right now, the internet history, it's gonna lead to some weird shit. I think that's what's happening. I think people are looking up, because they're so bored, they're like, fuck, I don't care. You know what happened? Uh, I, I went online and I bought pepper spray and a spear. Okay. Why? In case of apocalypse. You think a spear, a spear. A spear. pepper spray is going to protect you from, from, from an apocalypse? Well, I don't. I'll fight somebody, but I'd rather fight a blind person. Like if a blind guy was fucking with me, like say, like I'm hanging out with my with my girl and a blind guy. People are gonna be, you know, people surviving the apocalypse. What? You think blind people are gonna be the people surviving the apocalypse? No, not at all. (laughs) Exactly. But I will. An apocalypse is already like something already happening. Like something super shitty happens that leads to the apocalypse. Oh, my biggest fear is that the the wildfires the wildfires start up again. Well, or like an uh, earthquake. Like we're due for a big earthquake. We're due for a wildfire. We're due for a lot of like secondary natural disasters to happen. Well, the wildfire is not gonna. I mean, the, the biggest thing that it would affect was the fact that people would have to leave the house to get infected. But I'm pretty sure people could like get in their cars and leave their house at lunch. You know, and still be able to do some kind of social distancing. Yeah. Well, yeah, there's no one on the freeway right now. Like, the firemen are not going to be like, sorry, can't go put it out. Coronavirus. <laughs> They're still going to go out. The fire has coronavirus. Uh, it's a corona fire. Now, even though that, yeah, like, uh, we're due for fire, you also got to remember that because the economy has slowed down so much and a lot of people are not leaving the house of, and, you know, probably the sky in LA is the clear it's been in fucking, I don't know how long. You know, because all the pollution's gone and all that stuff. Like, it, it's going to affect the weather. And it might affect it in a way that, you know, that maybe we won't get that many fires this year. I was actually thinking. A lot of people out there. I'm getting a lot more sunburnt, so I'm wondering if the pollution. Um, was actually giving us uh, like an additional UV protection because I like I'm white and I get sunburnt pretty regularly, but lately it's just white? been I'm white and I get sunburnt regularly. So like I'm used to what it like what I can handle, and so I'm noticing that because of I, I just feel like I'm getting sunburnt way more easily. Someone told me it's because I'm older, but like I'm still 23. Like I'm not like an I'm not 30. Like, I'm not a gross, broken down, half youthful person like you. I'm, I'm like, still in the in the prime. I'm still, I'm not even I mean, in I'm, my prime. Like, I'm, I'm still going up. But sure, okay. <laughs> sure, I mean, in two years, I'll get there, yeah. I feel like, I feel like you're a 23 year old saying that is just the cutest shit I've ever heard in my life. Uh,. <laughs> Um, I have a I have a question for you. So, um, at the beginning of this pandemic, I struggled with my mental health a little bit because my main thing for staying sane. There's a plane. Okay, hold on. Listen to this. So, there's a plane flying up ahead, and there's two people, and I hope it crashes. Never mind. So it's it's gone now. So, at the beginning of this pandemic, I struggled a lot more with my um, with my mental health because I try and stay active to stay healthy. You know what I mean? So if there's shit on my mind, I go and I do shit to get new things on my mind. I like to accomplish things so that I can silence that like inner voice of like, fuck you, you suck. Um, but I was quarantined home. I didn't get, I wasn't able to do stand up. I wasn't able to do like anything. And so it, it was fucking with me. Yeah. 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 Well, what are the questions? Huh? What are the questions? Um, so how are you handling 
like, was there any challenge to your mental health during this pandemic? Yeah, it's cold drinking. No. <laughs> uh, I don't drink. Maybe I should. No, uh, fortunately for me, I was able to live with my family. Uh, but it did get to me. Uh, the way that I, that I tried to, like, get over to whatever was planning for after the, uh, the quarantine, uh, I wrote a lot. I went outside a lot. And just because I have a backyard. So I would hang out outside uh, with my dog. That was really nice. Um, I talked to my best friends on Zoom and all that stuff. I would talk to them. Um, have you done any Zoom? What? Have you done any Zoom open mics? Like any Zoom bombings? Uh, yeah, I've done, I've done a couple. I just, I, I don't know, man. I'd rather just write. And then once this shit ends, go ahead and actually go out and try a bunch of stuff. Hmm. Uh. But, I don't know, it, it just felt weird talking to one person, telling jokes, and then them having to be like, yeah, ha, ha, yeah, I guess that's a joke, you know? Like, uh, that's what. It, that's just, exactly what I want to avoid. It just feels, it just feels weird. Um, but, so that's kind of like what I've been trying to do, um, and uh, just talk to people, and I've been, I've been trying to learn a lot, because when I get out of here, um, my best friend and I, I feel like I'm in prison. Uh, my best friend and I are going to go, uh, we're going to be vlogging, which sounds very dumb, but we love theme parks, and we go to theme parks all the time, and the vlogging channels that we see on YouTube, we don't really, like, they're, they're, they're fine, but none of them are actually funny or creative in any kind of way. Wait, what, the, what kind of channels? The vlogging? Uh, like the, the theme park channels, like the vlogging theme park channels on I, YouTube. I've never heard that. Uh, there are people that go to like different theme parks and stuff like that, and they like and some of them do like food blocks and they do all the, all the food in the theme park, or or they do you know fucking I don't know uh, like they do like they go to all the theme parks and they get on the rides and they and they show you and they vlog about it and it's and it's fine and they're all right, uh, but we don't think none of them are actually funny or really that creative, mm-hmm. and so we want we wanted to we want to do our own because we do it all the time anyway. So we might as we might as well create uh, some kind of vlogging channel because he's really funny, you know. And so we have a we have good chemistry together. So we're gonna be doing that. And so I've been learning a lot about YouTube, uh, how to earn money on YouTube, uh, the algorithms. Uh, how oh to yeah, because it's very easy. Content. What? Yeah, it's very easy to earn money on YouTube. Uh, I'm joking. It is an addition, man, you know, like, uh, but how do actually make real money on YouTube, how to, like, maintain, you know, that, you know, how to, the algorithm, how to play with the algorithm, how to, how to create good content, how to edit good content, you know, all this stuff, I've been really, like, learning and, and you know, and, and trying to get, you know, as much information as I can before we actually do it, uh, so that's what's giving me sane, you know? Yeah, well, it looks, sounds like you're coming into it very calculated, and I think you'd be great at that, like, I like your little videos when you're like, it's a fat bitch day, for us, and you go and you, like, eat f- food. Like, I think about yeah. that every time I have a cheat day. Because my, my cheat meal is, uh, you know that cookie dough place up the street from Flappers? Mm-hmm. So, I would... One day, one day uh, I had to, I had, like, I had to empty out my bank accounts. And I had no money, and I was just sad. And I was like, I'm going to eat, like, dog shit right now. <laughs> and so, uh, me and my best friend... We went to Chipotle. I ate a whole, like, with a, I, an extra big Chipotle burrito. I ate the whole thing. And then right around the corner is Flappers and that cookie dough place. So then we're walking to the cookie dough place, and he has his weed pen, and I'm just ripping it just constantly. We walk into the cookie dough place. I get a medium. And cookie that cookie dough, it's, uh, it's probably uh, twice as decadent as ice cream. So however much ice cream you think you can handle... Half that, that's the comparison to cookie dough. And so I still get a large uh, with a lot of whipped cream and then a tall coffee. And that's my shit. And we just played card games. I mean, you can still do that kind of shit. That's the thing. Like, I love you. It was like, I had Coke Stone two days ago. Yeah, well, I'm trying to be healthy, man. I'm a personal trainer. Well, right. <laughs> You're like, I do that. That's my life. <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah, well, it's more, it's usually, like, um, 
I was doing once a week, but that's stupid. Um, it's just not enough time for to, to have a break. Um, I was do. I think right now I'm doing like once a month. Thank you. Yeah, you're going crazy. Well, I've, I've got nothing else to do but work out and podcast. Yeah. I mean, so because either people are going to come out of this ripped or people are going to come out of this fatter And I'm leaning into fatter All right. So I'm excited to see everybody's quarantine body uh, in the summer. I'm, me too, because I want to compare myself. Um, so let's wrap it up with this. Uh, what's your Instagram? My Instagram is at Sal de Santos. Uh, anything? And, uh, YouTube uh, channel? Is, huh? YouTube channel? Twitter? Uh, the YouTube channel is not out yet, so I'm not going to go ahead and release that. Uh, okay. But the Twitter is at Salvador the... Is, what is it? I'm sorry, I just changed it. Something that happened. It's Sal de Santos, S A L D E. S A N T O S, or you're saying your Twitter? Yeah, Salvador, like the country. Um, so it's gonna be at Salvador the Fan Twenty. So Salvador, like the country. D as in dog, E as in elephant, S as in silver, A as in Alvin, N as in no, and the number twenty. Salvador the Fan Twenty. Great. All right. Uh, thanks, thanks for talking everybody. to me. All right, that's enough promotion. All right, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for right. uh, talking to me, Sal. All right, thank you, man. You too. Bye. Ah, oh, Sal's fat. I Sal's great. I like Sal. Um, oh man, I can't wait to just be fucking jacked standing next to this guy. It's gonna be so satisfying for me. Uh, let's call Michael. This is fun. I like this. I really enjoy this. I'm having fun just calling people up. Because we, we all miss each other. Like, we're all separated. Oh, hey, Michael. Oh, what's up, man? Hey, what's up? Shit, man. Just up in, uh, on my porch. Nice. How fat are you? Uh, I don't have a porch. I have a balcony. Hey, did you know that Sal's getting ripped? Sal de Santos. He's like he's like super jack. We were talking just now. Um, his yeah, he's got like a line. no. He's got a home gym. He's back in Dallas right now with his family. Sal the mullet. Sal de Santos. He doesn't have no. Not the Sal with the mullet. Sal. He's got like a slight lisp. He works at Bubba Gump's. Oh fuck! He's that guy. Oh, he's not a fat no, he's, he's kind of, well, hold on. Let's back it. He's kind of a fat fuck. But my point, well, my, my point is that he's getting into like, like that. Just call that. But, you know, yeah. he calls himself that he said he has an Instagram story where he goes, uh, it's a fat bitch day for us. <laughs> anyway, he's getting jacked. Like we were talking and he's like, he said he's up to like, uh, 15 pull-ups straight and I was like really and he's like yeah and I'm like are you doing weighted pull-ups and he's like yeah he's got a home gym Man, I can do 10 pull-ups, so fuck it. you can do 10 pull-ups you can't you have a wrist injury as well what is it called? Like going on a pull apart, like hanging for a minute. Mm hmm. I've uh, gotten up to like hanging for three minutes. So. That's really good. That's tough. Yeah, like, I mean, like, that was when, like, I was, like, doing, I was doing it, though, every, before every workout, though. You know what I mean? Just to kind of, like, get my wrist strong. So, like, but I haven't done it in a minute, so. I always uh, did, uh, if you, so if you, for anyone who has a rotator cuff injury, um, if you hang, for like a few seconds right before you bench, I, I notice the big difference. I do like, yeah. I hang and then I, I do this like chest activation thing where like you rotate your shoulder inward and flex your pec. Nice. Well shit, yeah. And no, uh, I'm about to get a freaking, uh, I'm gonna get a speed bag set up today. 
so I can just uh, hit the speed bag and then do bits with my brother. Oh, yeah, that'll be great for your wrist. Oh, yeah, dude, fuck it. I'm going to come back to Broadway Boxing, bro, and just murder everyone there. During like, Broadway Boxing? Know, like, you know Broadway Boxing? I think you've mentioned it before. Yeah, it's, just, it's basically just like a, a super ghetto boxing gym. It's like, so like, if, you, if you're willing to spar there, they'll like basically say like, oh yeah, it's light spar, and then they'll just basically the entire time try to knock you the fuck out. Okay. Yeah, it's like, it's definitely like, kind of, I feel like it was awesome though, because I was white, you know, and it's a predominantly black and Hispanic gym. <laughs> you like, like that? Yeah, I'm the only white guy. <laughs> yeah, no, literally, I was like the only white guy there. So like every time I walked in, they just like look at me like, "What the fuck are you doing here?" And I'd be like, "What's up, bro?" You're like, "You know what I'm doing here." <laughs> yeah, I'd be like, I'm gonna fucking die. And like, I feel like maybe they had like some sort of like, I don't know, like negative feelings towards me because like one second, Gary, bro, I think I told you about Gary. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's so funny that you get your ass beat by a guy named Gary. Bro, I fucking hate. <laughs> bro, I hate that man, bro. Like, I literally, I've like pictured, I've been training for like just like lifting weights and pictured him and just pictured punching him with so much power that his chest like collapses in itself, bro. Do you want to like, collapse his chest? Like, it's like literally, I punch him so hard in the chest that it goes into his body and he just has an indent. Like, I don't want to kill him. But, like, like, you're I want him to walk around with like an indent in his chest from me forever in life like having to be like hey man what's up to your chest yet and this fucking this dude just punched me in the chest and it's never been the same <laughs> it's never been the same that's so he's like you want to you want to like like a car bumper level of dent like just permanent yeah, just like like, boom. like like an unrepairable dent you know cause like you can't repair bones you know like you just like try to mend it and re-break it and like the doctor's gonna let him go it's like look man like he punched you so hard and so perfectly that your chest wasn't completely shattered. There's just a giant indent in it. And like the doctor was gonna be puzzled by it. He's like, I don't know what to do. It's like I could do I could try to do surgery around it, but your organs in themselves have been flattened and somehow they still work. Huh. That that's the level there. Like the chest like where what organ is in the middle of your chest? That like your spleen. Like so, your I spleen think you're. I think spleen. I'm not entirely sure, but your rectum is yeah. around that area. Your rectum? Yeah, at least for you, because your rectum's like right above your neck, right? You, you die. <laughs> you know, if you put this much effort into boxing as you did into comedy, you'd probably be funnier. So, 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 yeah. I'm also gonna punch your chest hole through your chest. <laughs> this, this one is just gonna kill. You. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm going to come back with straight fire, bro. And you're just going to come back like, uh, I'm tall. <laughs> That's all I got? I'm just tall? That's all you got. You're like, yo, I'm tall. I lift weights. Hi, guys. That's you. Hi, I lift weights and I'm tall. I got big, goofy ears. That's me. Yep, I look like Douglas and... What's up, everyone? Let me fly away. Uh, is there anything, so, uh, I've already talked to Ahmed al Qadri and Sal DeSantos, and we discussed, like, what they were doing during this whole pandemic, so, Ahmed al Qadri is doing, like, a, a stand-up workshop on Instagram Live, and Sal DeSantos is gearing up for his, com his pandemic comeback, uh, with a vlogging channel, is there anything that you're currently working on? As you read it, right? Just reading and writing. Are you writing stand-up? Uh, I'm trying to, like, I don't know. I'm trying to write, find more stuff that's not funny at all. That's pretty serious subjects and making them funny to avoid just being tacky. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, this is more of, like, a... If you just go to, yeah, like, if you just go to things that everybody think is funny, then it's, like, you're not necessarily a hacky comic, but it's not going to be original. So if I find, I feel like if I find subjects that are, like, I don't really necessarily say offensive, but like subjects that are like, you know, people aren't going to think it's funny and somehow make it funny. You know, they're just going to come up to original work. This sounds more like personal development, which I feel like carries over into stand up very well. I think the more you develop yourself 
Um, the more you develop the self and you who you are, I feel like that skill and that development carries over into everything that you do. So I think that's a good move. I don't know. I, I, I'm not working on myself. I'm working on like my comedy. <laughs> oh well, you said. But like no, like I mean, like you, you know, like I feel like the best jokes are like some people. A lot of people say like the best jokes are authentic, right? Like authentic to the person. Mm -hmm. And it's like a lot of people don't want to talk about like their own personal stuff. So it's like then you go to like writing original content. You know, it's like okay, like this is a subject that people don't find funny. It's me as a comedian job to stuff and make it funny. And that's that feel where it actually becomes like a channel to joke writing. And that's what I'm going to get. I'm going to do more of. Especially like right now, I have fucking mad time, dude. That's true. Well, yeah, like, I mean, like, I'm still, like, I'm working under the table, but, like, fucking, uh, yeah, like, damn, I'm not doing shit. I'm already drinking. It's wonderful. Hmm. Uh, what's, uh, hey, so, are you still in L.A., or did you move back, or what are you doing? No, so I'm from here. I, yeah, I'm still in L.A. I know, well... But, like, you're not, you're, like, two hours away. No, I live in Lomita. Isn't that, like, an hour away or something? Yeah, it's about, I mean, right now, it's fucking 20 minutes from Hollywood. 30, 20 minutes from Hollywood. Dude, I know, it's great. Yeah, but, yeah, no, it's it basically, like, I'm still going to be working by the time when this ends. So, you know, it's still going to be the same concept as, like, being in downtown, rolling Hollywood, stay until 3 a.m., driving back home, you know? Hey, you think... <laughs> You think it would be cool if I call uh, Christina as well? Because she's also got like a clothing company that's like, like she's building that up during this whole thing. Yeah, Christina's been making a couple of masks and stuff. Christina's more, because even like those merch, I like the virtual things, man. Do you I like them? Me. I don't like them. No one likes them. That's why I was like, what? And like a lot of people have been doing, I get it, like a lot of people, I'm not that hate on anybody's doing it. A lot of people have been doing it because, you know, stuff is like better for doing it, the way of like really like practicing your jokes or anything hmm. but it's like well, she's been doing a lot of them lately yeah um yeah, yeah. she was like the flappers she's host for those than me, so. what was that? she was the host for all the flapper uh zooms right yeah i, I think she hosted a couple of them oh no i think yeah okay well, uh, what's your? Why don't you promote like your Instagram or your Twitter or your YouTube or whatever, and then I'll I'll let you go. It's uh, Galloping Buffalo, and I don't trust Twitter. Why don't you trust Twitter? Well, to be honest, I couldn't figure it out, and yeah, that's basically the reason. <laughs> you like couldn't I'm figure out Twitter. Twitter? I just like I feel like if you want me to trust the social media app, it has to be easy to use, and Twitter is just I don't know, man. It's just difficult for me for some reason. Okay. Anyway, I can't figure uh, out how to log on. That so. Thank you once again for coming on, Michael. Uh, you're my favorite overweight comedian. Um, I'll call you again soon. I don't like you ever. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like you as a person. I just hung up on him. Ah, oh, that feels so good. Uh, I'll see if Logan wants to, to come on. I think he's busy. Ah, uh, man, that was that was fun. I really enjoyed that. That was that was very enjoyable for me. Uh, I love Ahmed. Ahmed's great. Um, me and him, I feel like we're like the same person sometimes because he has a very similar story to mine about like about developing confidence. So um, in high school, he started working out and he got jacked and he got big and people liked him because he was good looking. Um, as to where I started working out in high school, but I didn't get good looking. I just stopped being like fat. I was still scrawny uh, because I wasn't dieting well or anything. And um, I started getting people to like me because I was funny and also because I was dating like, a, like two or three pretty girls. Not at the same time as I was in high school, but like... Like, the fact that I was, like, having sex was, like, a, like oh, shit, like, that guy? Like, yeah, this guy. <laughs> um, and that sort of became where I based my confidence on um, versus he based his confidence off working out. And so, like, like, he's just great, and he, but we have a lot of the same insecurities. So, like, we, we know how to reassure one another. And Ahmed is just, like, a really close friend of mine. Like, I can, I can trust him with a lot, and he, he is, like, he gives the fact that he likes me and likes my stand up 
makes me feel like I'm funny. Like I have, I can be more confident in myself because I believe in him and he believes in me. Um, Sal, Sal is one of those people where like, I always see him around and like, it's not that we're not, I just, I want to be closer to him cause he's a cool guy, but I see him around a lot. And he, he said something to me one time I, I did like a weird, I was starting to like write weirder material, like more flavored for me. And he walked up to me after one of the, I, I didn't do a great set. <laughs> it wasn't good. Uh, and he walked up to me afterwards and he was like, what the fuck was that? And I was like, what? And he's like, I've seen you do better. I've seen you do better. It was at the Laugh Factory. I've seen you do better here. What, what was all that? And I was just like, um, I don't know. It's just what I wanted to do. And he's just like, don't you think you should be doing like better, more worked out material for auditions? And I was like, yeah, you're probably right. And so I, I know he cares and I know he thinks I'm good and I think he's good. And I just, it's just, it's just great having friends. It's great having friends. I love having friends. I love my friends. Um, and then Michael. Michael is like, he's like my little brother. He's just, Michael is just this scrawny, fat, weak lump of shit. And I'm just molding him into, he's my clay, you know? Like, I'm just molding him into a, a man. Because he's, you know, like he's older than me. But I, I, I'm just more advanced than him, you know? And I'm just, I'm working on him a lot, you know? I, like some people, you do charity. Some people, you volunteer at the at your local animal shelter. Me, I'm trying to build up Michael Silver. Anyway, um, this podcast was a lot of fun. Thank you if you watched or you're listening. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at the Anthony Martin. You can follow me on Twitter at What Am I. You can follow this podcast on YouTube at... Uh, all ears podcast um not the one about language turns out that there's like a swedish podcast called all ears which is about like learning different languages or something i didn't listen to it anyway thank you all so much bye-bye